As you might recall, the frequency of oscillation in the Wainbridge oscillator depends on resistor R and capacitor C. But in the circuit, there are two resistors R and two capacitors C. So if we were to change the frequency of the Wainbridge oscillator, we would need to change either both resistors R or both capacitors C simultaneously. That's a bit of a challenge. With resistors, we would need two potentiometers that change at the same time. Or if we were going to change the capacitors, we would need ganged capacitors so that when we turn a single knob, both variable capacitors change at the same time. Now they do manufacture ganged capacitors like that for exactly this purpose. But we can do better. We can redesign the oscillator so that we only need to adjust one circuit element in order to tune the frequency. That's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to improve the Wainbridge oscillator. This circuit involves two different amplifiers. Let's first identify the main feedback loop of this oscillator. We can look for the reactive circuit elements, IC2 capacitors. We know that the capacitors are necessary in order to shift the phase of the signal as it passes through the loop. In this feedback loop, I see one capacitor in series and one capacitor in shunt. I also see some resistors, therefore this is probably a Wainbridge oscillator. The capacitor in series shifts the phase in one direction, the capacitor in shunt shifts the phase in the other direction, and we have a non-inverting amplifier in the main feedback loop. In order to find the frequency of oscillation of this circuit, we're going to have to do some analysis. I'm going to label some of the parameters on the circuit. Let's call this the output voltage since it's at the output of the amplifier. Let's label this node Vx and let's label this node Vy. Let's call this current 1, let's call this current 2, and let's call this current 3. It's not so easy for me to use voltage division to solve this oscillator circuit as I did with the phase shift oscillator or the Wainbridge oscillator. Let's just use standard circuit analysis. Between these two dotted lines, I can identify a standard inverting amplifier. The gain of that amplifier is given by negative R1 over R2. Let's call that equation 1. We have another amplifier over here. The voltage at the non-inverting input of this amplifier is V sub x. As long as the amplifier is working correctly, the voltage at the inverting input should also be V sub x. If I idealize this amplifier, then there won't be any current flowing into the inverting input. Therefore, the current through this resistor, R1, should equal the current through the second resistor, R1. The current through the first resistor is given by Ohm's law, and that's equal to the current through the second resistor. If we now look at this branch between the output voltage and Vx, we can use Ohm's law, V equals IR. Since the voltage at the non-inverting input of this amplifier is zero, the voltage at the inverting input should also be zero. This means that Vx should equal I2 times R2. All of the current I3 should pass through that capacitor. This means that Vx should also equal I3 times the impedance of that capacitor. Finally, the currents entering this node should equal the currents exiting the node. We have a system of six equations and six unknowns. Let's first simplify equation two. Let's write equation one in terms of Vx only. Let's eliminate Vx and Vy from the set of equations. I'm going to multiply R1 times J omega C. I've now eliminated Vx and Vy from the set of equations. I now have four equations and four unknowns. Since I have expressions for both I1 and I3, I can eliminate those from the equations as well. Let's now rewrite equations 2 and equations 3. We now have two equations and two unknowns. We have an expression for the output voltage. Let's substitute that into equation three. We can cancel the current I2 from each term in this equation. We can simplify the left side a little bit. Let's now multiply both sides of this equation by J omega C. 
This equation is very interesting because we have an imaginary term on the left-hand side of the equation that cancels an imaginary term from the right-hand side of the equation. We end up with only real numbers. This is a very special oscillator because we end up with only one condition for oscillation, and that's the frequency. There's no specific requirement on the gain. R1 appears multiple times in this circuit, but resistor R2 appears only one time. So it's possible to adjust the frequency of oscillation by changing only one component in this particular circuit. We want to make sure that the gain for the amplifier over here is a little bit higher than what the circuit nominally calls for. So when I actually build the circuit in the lab, I would want to choose a value for this resistor R1 slightly higher than the others. That would ensure that the gain is sufficient in order to get the oscillator started and to overcome any circuit noise. For resistor R1, I've chosen a value of 12 kilo ohms for this one particular amplifier in order to increase the gain a little bit. For all of the other resistors R1, I've chosen 10 kilo ohms. For the capacitor C, I chose 22 nanofarads. That will put the frequency of oscillation somewhere in the audio range. Finally, for resistor R2, I've put a potentiometer in series with a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. As we adjust the potentiometer, we should be able to hear a change in the frequency. I've buffered the output and attached it to a speaker. Therefore, I've used three op amps in this particular circuit. In order to provide power to the op amps, I've chosen to use two 9-volt batteries. So this is how I would hook those 9-volt batteries up to the circuit. I've built the circuit on a breadboard and hooked it up to a speaker. Let's hear how it sounds. I just need to make the final connection for the power supply, and then we should be able to hear something. So in this video, we've made a Wainbridge oscillator that's been modified so that we can tune the frequency of oscillation by adjusting a single resistor.